Welcome to my thoughts on the 2024 short film Identities. So, yeah, um, spoilers for absolutely everything in the short. I am going, to, you know, this is this is made for people who already watched it. I'm also not going to be like explaining, you know, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm going to be referencing stuff that's in the short without giving description for, for people who haven't already watched. So, the, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, um, right off the bat, I really love the, I love that it just starts in this, you know, it, much like Cube, you know, it, it doesn't show us because, cause like, the, the, you know, by the end of the short, you feel like, oh, okay, this person agreed to work for a corporation, and this is what... But they don't have any memory from before, and they're just in this space, you know, just... Which is a fantastic hook, you know. Um, let's see, the... Yeah, I thought they did a fantastic job making the the... So I'm, I suppose I'm going to have to be calling them Aaron with an A, Aaron with an E, and once we get the non-binary version, Aaron with an I. Um, yeah, the Aarons are just distinct enough that they feel like, you know, yeah, different aspects, and, and Aaron with an I basically, you know, yeah, the fully happy version, the, the one that's allowed to live their true self. Um, love the bit about, you know, add to the list, figure it out our pronouns, you know, and the we entered together kind of thing, you know, they're not having to live in a, they're not having to, to limit themselves to just the parts that, you know, the system deems acceptable. Um, but, but yeah, uh, yeah, they feel like, they feel distinct, but of a whole. You know, it feels like different aspects of the same person. You know, so Aaron with an A is, is you know, kind of freaking out at the start, and Aaron with an E is is trying to play it more cool kind of thing. And I, I love the... Oh, right, I, I realized I didn't mention... Yeah, so there's, you know, there's swearing in the short gonna be a little swearing at least a little in this possibly only when quoting but yeah uh i haven't decided yet but yeah the the bit about you know she yeah she says fuck several times and then you know after a little while he says fuck and then she's like you just swore so am i a good bad influence you know, that was that was a great you know so so basically yeah it it is like the some and, and she's, yeah, Aaron with an E, you know, why are you always touching things? You know, she, she is the, the unrestrained kind of, you know, which I appreciate having a, a, a woman play the, the less restrained, you know, there's, there's so much media that says, you know, women, you know, are and or have to, you know, naturally and or have to be, like, just in complete control, never, never let any, you know, yeah, never, never show the, the, any, any emotion that isn't, you know, I mean, when, when we're seeing them, I mean, they don't know if they're being watched, they don't really know the parameters of this situation, and she's, you know, going around saying, fuck, she's, she's touching walls, even though she hasn't been told that that's okay, you know, these, at one point she, like, punches the wall, like, you know, she is, yeah, just fully expressing, you know, what she, she feels about the, the situation, um, though she does not, she, she says, who says I'm freaking out, you know, um, let's see, then we have the, Right, I really appreciated the weight given to them, like, you know, the, the, yeah, sometimes, you know, something 
important will happen if they touch a wall or that sort of thing. You know, so so the sense of touch is is important, and when they touch hands, when they touch directly, you know, that's also a really big you know event for which you know the the it's this you know jesse herself said in i want to say it was called blue sky it's not something i'm super familiar with but i did read it before watching this um oh by the way make sure you watch the the commentary track and the behind the scenes and such also on nebula um but but yeah the the you know, she she herself has pointed out, you know, it's it's an expression. It's it's one of the few things that the LGBTQ plus you know members of the community are able to how how they're able to express their love in in public is is you know the, the yeah. And it also made me think of this thing of like that's one thing that the system really can't handle is expressions of affection is is you know. To, towards anything other than the system. Um, let's see. Right. The the yeah the TV in the in the white void really reminded me of like Matrix. You know, with the the whole you've been living the dream world monologue and bit. Um, I like that after a while they just stop listening to Steve, which like they they're in a they're in a very unknown situation, but he's still like they're you know they're still like okay, fuck that guy. Let's figure you know this yeah, you know add fuck that guy. Add that to the list. Making a list, checking it twice. Um, I love the the corporate speak and and Delancey does such a great like you know they they named him Steve like Steve Jobs there's definitely some Mark Zuckerberg going on and and just yeah this thing of you know you are family you know you will you will live I, I forget if it's him who says it or it might be Michelle but someone says you know you're going to live you know on the on the uh, property of the 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 company, uh, you know, bringing to mind like company towns and this, um, I forget the exact term for it, but there's, you know, th there's this tendency recently for some large corporations to like try to push their workers to stay there for longer by, you know, saying, oh, look, we, we got a, this thing, isn't that like better than being at home? Maybe you should stay, do some more hours, you know? Even though we've already, you know, pushed you to work longer than, like, studies literally say, you know, no, after, I forget the exact number of hours, but the, the, the eight, let's see, eight hour work day is actually not beneficial to, like, like after a certain amount of hours, you basically, like, crash and you're less effective and it would make more sense, even for the company, but they're, you know, they just... I want to grind you down the, the not every single company but you know most of the biggest companies I, I realize some smaller companies and such certainly don't but yeah you know they they want to grind you down they want to control every waking moment of your life as, as much as at all possible so yeah they keep pushing even though studies say no it would it would be more beneficial like why are you the more hours an employee works the more you have to pay them why are you forcing them to work past when they're at optimal? Wouldn't you rather save that money? You know, maybe hire some more people. You know, it it would make more sense. But yeah, that's that's capitalism. Um, right. I loved the the thing about. Oh, oh right. I I did want to briefly say. You know, but so, yeah, by the end of the the short. You know the system has has crashed and needs rebooting because of the the refusal to make the binary choice the the embracing of the non-binary identity. I love the the joy on their faces there at the at the very end, uh, being allowed to live their authentic self. 
Um, but, but yeah, I did want to briefly say, I don't think the system is supposed to be like society, although I suppose it could be like a cheeky, do you really think society would just crumble if we start accepting LGBTQ plus people, you know, love how, like, this is the exact right time to, to talk about the, the, you know, the, the abuse of the, the systematic abuse of the LGBTQ plus community, the, the, um, um, and the, the growing power of corporations. Um, the, right, yes. I don't think the system is a stand-in for society. I think it is, like, the system, which, again, brings us back to the Matrix, you know. But the, yeah, it, it is this, like, corporate control. Um, the, the, yeah. It's, it's not society and, like, you know, people going about their lives. It's, it's the powerful. Um, I love how, uh, what's the word? Like, um, the Stepford Wives, the, the identities that you see in the orientation video are... Like, they, you know, they're, they're standing there, you know, smiling, saying, oh, I'm so happy. And you're looking at them like, you are not happy. You are a robot. That is not, you know, so fantastic. And, and that's not, like, they smile at other points, the, those two actors, in, in the short film, but never in that kind of creepy mechanical. And we get the thing about, you know, not everybody can afford what was it, like, legs and, and you know these minor things, and, and Steve is like, I mean, I'm a hero, right? I gave you this amazing thing. Meanwhile, he's trying to force them into the binary, you know, so just, yeah. Um, and, and that again is, like, you, you listen to some of these, like, tech billionaires and such, and you, like, you, you sit there, you think, how do you, not, do you not hear yourself? You, you, you don't sound like, the savior of humanity, which you clearly are styling yourself as, you sound like a dictator, and that is very much what Steve. I love the the one um, Anthony Ant has the the picture behind him, and it does it is giving like fascism, fascist propaganda. You know, he's like Steve looks like a god in in that picture practically. Um, let's see. Right, I like the line, you know, you, you have two choices. I know, one too many, you know, like, you know, he, yeah, the, the, so we're, we're, he's saying choice is technically bad. The idea of, of even two choices, you know, let alone, you know, past the binary is bad. And, and just these, you know, yeah, um, I love that when he says, you know, this could lead to confusion, we see like, you know, and an, a, a drawing of like furries, which you know, there's some overlap. Not every, uh, not every member of the LGBTQ plus community is a furry, and vice versa. There is some overlap, and furries have been used as like a um, stepping stone to targeting trans people. You know, with with propaganda that doesn't even make even a little bit of sense. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, I quite like the thing about, you know, the, the one door and they try to both, you know, proceed, uh, yeah, proceed towards it. And then we see, you know, it, it disappears and it is this thing of seemingly they are going to be forced. Um. I really like that Ant is introduced looking through this, like, you know, clearly it's a, it's a monitor. It's not an actual window. And, and there's this like sort of staticky effect. Like you, you can see from looking in, you can also hear from the sound. Clearly that's not an actual window, you know, but he's still looking through it. Like there's still... You know, I, I appreciate how complex this character is. I um, I think it was maybe... Um, I'm afraid I forget her name. Um, but the... Um, 
the the YouTuber uh, Council of Geeks, I think it was her who said, you know, he's somewhat over developed for this this short, and it's very clear that Jesse has other stuff she'd like to do with the the character. It reminded me again a lot of like Matrix, I suppose. Do I want to spoil the major? You probably know who I'm talking about. You know, let, yeah, let's just go with... In, in Matrix Media, there is also a character who, like, is part of the system, upholding the system, but there's this urge to break free because of something they've realized, you know. But, um, the, but yeah, you know, even Ant still does want... You know, he, he misses the real world the the which i i quite appreciate we never actually do see the real world in the entire short film we only ever see the the what was it called Ven venta verse i think they called it um let's see i kept thinking that we were going to see the face of the I'm, I'm not I'm not criticizing this choice, but I, I I just wanted to to express how it you know to to me I kept thinking that we were going to see the face of ants uh, the the female version of of him and that that would be Abigail Thorne, but then I suppose it does it is I I really have absolutely no problem I love the the fact that no that's actually you know. Steve made an AI out of his dead wife. And every so often she still pops up and, and is like trying to, to comfort him. And, you know, phenomenal acting. Like you, despite the fact that it's clearly the same actress, Val and Sarah are worlds apart. Um, let's see. I really like that Ant has just slightly, you know, a little bit of... of an an office setting, you know, complete with the the very sardonically placed uh, uh, recycling bin, which, like, you know, yeah, recycling is, is, you know, we we kind of, I'm not even sure you're really allowed to completely skip recycling today, which is great. Um, but, but they didn't have to, you know, the, the art design, art designers did not have to put the recycling thing on, which, oh yeah, I also, I just realized it kind of looks like a, um, a version of the, the like windows, um, recycling bin, you know, but, but yeah, the, the idea of this, cause it's, it is this, the, uh, what's the term greenwashing, you know, it's the corporation saying, Look, we we care about the environment. You know, we're we're so progressive whilst they're forcing people to conform to a binary for seemingly no reason. Like they they don't really you know, it I suppose it's possible that'll be expanded upon later, but it seems like it's just that they they built the system in this particular way without having to. You know, they didn't they didn't seem to have to make it not allow non-binary identity but yeah you know his you know he has a little bit of like there's not a huge amount of personality in in his office but a little bit and then when at, at the end when we see steve we see much more personality you know so it is this thing of like the higher up you are on the hierarchy the more you know M michelle's office space is also not that you know personalized and and such um let's see i really really loved that michelle is so over it and the conflict between michelle and aunt you know where you know just constantly sniping at each other and i yeah yeah you know um aaron with an eye appears and michelle doesn't even look up for the first like maybe minute of, of, you know, she's just reading from the manual, like, welcome to, uh, here we, you know, I am Michelle, your guide to the Ventiverse, just, she really does not want to be there, and it's this thing of, like, her words say welcome, but her tone says, 
please release me from this misery, you know, which, yeah, you know, corporate America. Um, let's see. And, you know, and, and yeah, at first, like, Aaron is just like, Aaron with an eye is just like, okay, can, can you explain this to me? And, and Michelle's like, please, no, no questions. I have to... I'm on the clock, I have a schedule, I'm already late, we have to get through all this text, then we can do questions, you know. And then really, like, panics when she realizes that Aaron is the, the, um, the, yeah, that, that this is the non-binary version of Aaron. Um, and, and yeah, I, I like the exchange, why do you assume I did anything um, and let's see, he says, fair point, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I like the, <laughs> your dual matrix should have crashed by now, and they're, like, trying to high-five, like, yeah, you know, look at us, um, let's see, yeah, and, and I really love the part of, of the short where they are, you know, basically, Ant is talking to both of them, but they're separated, you know, which, you know, I can imagine for, you know, trans people and non-binary individuals having to separate part of your identity, you know, section off like that and being forced to choose being told you cannot exist in this space if you do not make this choice. I can imagine that, yeah, you know, it, it must be devastating, you know. I, I I really don't want to want to censor myself here, but I do just want to say, you know, that again, this is something, you know, everybody can understand having to get rid of part of their their personality, and I say that to to say, you know, I think this short could help improve increase empathy for, you know, there there's not enough media. We are gradually getting more, but there's not enough that shows LGBTQ plus experiences from their perspective. Let's see. Right. I like Ant pointing out, you know, you know, because like Aaron with an A, I think it is, says, you know, so I chose to be here. And Ant just goes, well, you got to work somewhere. You know, you have to choose. You have to be part of the corporate world. Um, let's see. Yeah, really loved his entire, Ant's entire monologue, fantastic acting. Um, and it's something I really want to see followed up on in, in future. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then, you know, at the end they find themselves in the, in the club and you know the the in in behind the scenes uh, you know jesse pointed out she made sure there were as many lgbtq plus people as as extras in the in the club scene and yeah the the you know michelle saying i learned how to switch my avatar's code long ago reference to code switching love it um let's see and yeah, so, I mean, it does seem, like, you could definitely make a follow-up to this where, like, Michelle and Aaron, like, work together to, to change the system. Um, let's see, and, and yeah, I, I like the, the, this thing of, you know, the, um, what's it called? you know, working within the system to try to change the system, but having to do so in secret. You know, Michelle isn't, like, seemingly at least, isn't, like, going to meetings and saying, I think we should change this and this. No, she's having to do it in secret. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, at the at the very end, the, the post-credit scene, as soon as Jesse cast... John Delancey, of course she had to do the Q-snap. Again, I really appreciate, like, if you've never watched Star Trek, you know, it's still gonna, it's not gonna have the same effect, it's not gonna get the, the nostalgia tinge thing, but it's, you're still, it still looks like, it still fits in the scene, you know. Um, let's see. 
Right, and I appreciate the the note that you know, yeah, they they affected the system. They even temporarily crashed the system by refusing the binary. But the system is coming back online, and you know, Steve is going to try to to address this. And based on the the short, I'm thinking it's you know he's going to try to make it impossible and maybe even try to to get to Aaron rather than just change the system to allow for it and i think that could be a a conflict that you could see explored if they do make if Jesse is able to to make this into a series uh which i really hope because i thought she did fantastic here this is a you know this is impressive and not just for a debut um but the Let's see. Ah, what was the other thing? The um... oh, right, and the yeah, uh, I can't believe I didn't mention it until now. But the Twilight Zone element is also absolutely wonderful. Um, and yeah, I appreciate that the metaphors and allegory stuff is you know quite on the nose. I think we're past the the. We, I don't think we need to do more of, like, subtle... Because it gets... Like, conservatives scream about it no matter how subtle it is. And they seem to misunderstand even when it's extremely clear. Like, somehow a bunch of conservatives either misunderstood or intentionally misrepresent. I don't know which makes them look worse. Barbie, like the, the Greta Gerwig, Margot Robbie movie, you know... It's, like, I, I certainly appreciate the the criticisms that you know from from the left of that movie and it definitely it is very introductory you know surface level in a lot of it but it communicates it quite clearly like i i don't know how you miss the commentary on patriarchy watching that um i think that covers um yeah yeah back to yeah if jesse is able to make a series out of this yeah it could be this thing of you know the errands trying to stay one step ahead of steve you know using you know possibly both in the real world and the the ventiverse which you know they they managed to to crash the system break out so you know clearly they are able to to uh, exert some some control over it um what's the other thing and the yeah um yeah them trying to stay one step ahead and trying to you know make the system open to to more people whilst steve is is trying to stop them and trying to to find and eliminate the glitch i really appreciate that the trailer i didn't realize until the short was over but the trailer, the entire voiceover by Steve never appears in, in the film, you know. And it's it's like with the Children of Men trailer. It's this thing of, like, verbally explaining the situation that when you watch the final product, it takes a little longer to, to get there. Which, in, in both cases, is good. You know, the, the fact, it's not a problem for either of these properties that what that the the voiceover in the trailer is not in the, the final product but it does tell you what to expect from the final product without having to like stitch together a bunch of lines to to try to communicate something that the the final product having more time is able to more organically yeah get across um, I feel like there's one more thing. Um, maybe that is everything. Um, yeah, just absolutely love this. I really, really hope Jesse is able to do more of this and, you know, anything she wants to to make like artistically i'm i'm gonna watch that's yeah um 100 
That is for sure. Um, what was the other thing? Um, right, yes. Uh, as others have pointed out, this is very, you know, this is a great sign for Nebula that they're able to, to make something like this. You know, the, you know, I could, I could imagine a lot of people will join based on something like this and and this in particular you know it if if i had watched this if some if someone had shown this to me and not told me that it was on you know this like you know nebula like in in part is basically an alternative to youtube it's it's a less restrictive youtube without all the the toxic elements and you know yeah it's it's it focuses on giving creators freedom over trying to chase the algorithm and and now they're making you know something like this like this could easily be on like one of the other streaming services, you know, one of the, like, big, you know, based on its production value and the the emotional intelligence on display, it's definitely too daring for some of them, and that, you know, might well be why it is on Nebula. But, yeah, um, I definitely think this is, you know... It's, it's a great idea for Nebula to, in addition to, to being a more, you know, yeah, a, a better YouTube in a lot of ways. It is, you know, to, to yeah, to, for it to also offer this sort of thing. Because, you know, not everybody's gonna, you know, not everybody wants to, to watch YouTube. Some people just want to sit down and watch something, you know, a, yeah, some, a, a short film or show or movie or that sort of thing. And for, for something like this to, to be on there, you know, just, yeah. Um, I love how much of a love letter this is to all these, you know, nerd properties that, you know, I as a nerd, you know, I, I, yeah, that the Jesse Gender is a, a fan of, and you know, I, I, th I read somewhere that in part this takes inspiration from Tron. I know that uh, it's going to sound ridiculous. I haven't actually watched the original Tron. Um, maybe I will at some point. Um, but but yeah, you know the the. Again, you know, it doesn't feel like... I've, like, I've seen people just make fan films of The Matrix, for example. This doesn't feel like she's just, like, thinking, I can definitely do what the Wachowski sisters did, even though I have a much smaller budget and all that, you know. No, she picked elements that made sense. You know, this thing, like, in, in The Matrix, you have the, the you know, the... um. The corporate machine, you know, you, you see, yeah, it's, it's this thing of, you know, you see how in 1999 what office worked looked like back then, and it is very alienating. You can 100% understand why Neo does not enjoy this job at all. You know, he's very passive aggressive in the scene where he's getting chewed out. You know, the, the boss like looks to the side, and Neo's like, huh, freedom window. Wish I could just, you know, go, I, he's, he's going to regret wishing to be on the other side of that window soon enough. But the, the, um, this takes, you know, that, that similar feeling, but updates it to the metaverse. And, it's, you know, I, I've already talked for a while now, so I'm just going to, I'll just re, I'll direct you to some more news. Excellent. I forget if he did more than one, but he did at least one excellent video on the metaverse and why it is, like, existentially horrifying, you know, at, at least in its current form, I suppose, in the future, you know, the, the, 
Yeah, but the the way that corporations are talking about, you know, making everywhere feel like you're in a, a digital world, you're always at work kind of thing, and the, you know, they're like that. That way, we can get even more, you know, labor out of these these people who have way too little power, and you know, as regular people look at that and think, how, how do you think that this is a good thing?